With Thanksgiving almost here and Christmas not far behind, it's time to get out the pie recipes and I'm going to show you a quick and easy pie crust recipe that I learned from my mother-in-law who is an amazing cook that is going to wow your guests. This crust just has three simple ingredients. It's two cups of flour, one cup of shortening, and a half cup of ice water. You're going to put in your two cups of flour all at once and then add your one cup of shortening. Mix the shortening in with the flour until it's fully incorporated. I just use a simple fork for this, but if you have a pastry cutter, you could use that. And you're going to know when you're done when it all resembles little balls and there's no loose flour anymore. This is how mine looked when I was done mixing. It's time to begin adding the water and what I do is I start adding that half cup a little bit at a time. I stir as I add the ice water and when it seems like my shortening flour mixture can't take any more water, I stop even if I've not put in the entire half cup. It is a wet dough and that's fine. You can see that I used all the water and to be perfectly honest, it was a little more wet than I wanted it to be, but this pie crust is so fail safe, it still came out fine. Once your water is mixed in, then put the dough in some saran wrap and wrap it up tight. Then we're gonna put it in the refrigerator. We're gonna chill the dough for one hour. I spray my pie plates with avocado oil to make sure that the pie doesn't stick. Once the pie crust has been chilled for one hour, we're ready to roll it out. And what I'm going to do is unwrap it and then I'm going to divide it in two because this does make a double crust. And the part that I'm not rolling out, I'm going to put back into the refrigerator until I've completed the first half. I'm going to be rolling this out between two pieces of parchment paper because I found that when I do this, I don't have to add as much flour onto my rolling pin. This helps me to avoid overworking the dough, which is a big deal with pie crust because it will make it tough if it's overworked. So this way I can just roll it out once and I'm good to go. I flour the bottom piece of the parchment paper. And then I also flour the pie crust itself and I do use quite a bit of flour as you can see here. Also, I have flattened that dough a bit with my hand first, then I put the parchment paper down on the top and I flatten it with my hand again first. And then when I'm rolling, I'm trying to go from the center out. And I keep turning the parchment paper because I'm in general making a bit of a circle with it. Personally, I'm never too concerned with how the bottom of the crust looks, the bottom piece, because that's going to be covered by pie filling and no one is actually going to see it. Once I think I've rolled it enough that my dough is big enough, I plop it in the pie plate, parchment paper and all, just to measure and see if it's big enough. And then if it is, I peel the parchment paper away and put the pie crust right in that pie plate. Now, if you wanted to freeze your pie, that would work perfectly well. You can freeze it raw once you put the pie together. Of course, you'd probably want to use a disposable pie pan if you don't have enough pans to spare one that would stay in the freezer. So here you can see me peeling that pie crust away. It's a little tricky, so that's why it's important to make sure you had some flour down. Now that my pie crust is in the pie pan, I'm just working it around with my hands to make sure pie crust is covering all the spots I want it to cover. One thing I'll say about a homemade crust that I love is the store-bought ones tend to crack um, where they were folded and you're always trying to mend it and it's very easy to mold a homemade crust. 
I love this particular recipe because it does have a lot of shortening in it ratio wise and that helps the pie crust to be that much more pliable. Now I'm just trimming the edges with my butter knife because I don't want a pie crust that hangs over the edge. If I was going to do the pinch method of putting the two pie crusts together with the pretty pinches on the outside, then I wouldn't do this. I'd want it to hang over the side, but I prefer to fork press my pie crust, which you'll see later. Now I'm ready to roll the top crust and I'm going to be spreading my flour, pressing the pie crust with my hands again, putting it between two pieces of parchment paper and rolling it out just like I did the first one. Now I'm making sure that I don't have any wrinkles that were caused by my parchment paper. Sometimes the parchment paper wrinkles and so I'm just flattening that out. Now I'm placing the whole thing over my pie, taking off the first layer of parchment, flipping it over, and peeling back that parchment paper, and look how perfect that pie crust is. I'm putting it on top of an apple pie. If you'd like a recipe for apple pie, I will link one in the description box below. The recipe I'm giving you uses cornstarch as a thickener, which is really important if you plan to freeze the pie before you bake it. Now I'm fork sealing my pie crust. This is how my mom did it and my grandmother did it as well. And so it feels very nostalgic to do the same thing that they did. And I'm gonna be poking holes in the top of the pie with my fork that lets the steam out. I'll be baking this pie at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes or until it's golden brown on top. Please let me know in the comments below if you decide to try this pie crust recipe and consider subscribing because there'll be more holiday recipes on the way. Thanks for watching. Bye.